For those who are okay fans, and welcome to Nightly the Donner Man, your host, or I am your host, Dominic Shadowfury. Let's just get going. Whatever. This is God as Shields versus Anarchid as also Shields on Living Lands. And, of course, that is what Living Lands is all about. Shields. And being generally quite close to your opponent. So, with that, we have Anarchy going out with an early band push, while Gota looks like they're being much more economical, as that's not surprising to me at all. Getting that reclaim going. Because, of course, that's the thing you want to do. Get that early reclaim, get the early resources. I'm actually kind of surprised that we don't see Anarchy doing that right off the bat. They are getting some, but not much. Wait, what the heck? That looks like a misclick. They're not reclaiming anything around here except for a couple trees, so... Yeah, not sure what the point there was, but... At any rate, Gota's gonna, be Gota's gonna be slightly ahead as a result. Naturally speaking. So, at this point, Anarchid is... Basically just relying on being able to outband their opponent. But I don't see that happening for very long, considering that Gota does have quite a bit of build power as well. I mean, really, all this is allowing Gota to build their energy economy way faster than Anarchid. And overall, is going to lead to them having a much stronger start. I mean, they aren't playing the build power on units until just now. But now they're putting the build power on the units, because now they have the energy, and they have the metal, and everything is working out well for them. While Anarchy, on the other hand, is struggling with, like, 10 metal per second. So, Gota is going to have a fairly small, but growing advantage economically and militarily very shortly. Especially with all the convicts going out here, actually. That's that's even better for them. They're really going to be expanding quick. So, like, by the next couple minutes, this entire southwest side of the map is basically going to be belonging to Gota completely. Anarchy, on the other hand, deciding the northwest side of the map is where they want to go and build up and expand and all that stuff, which makes sense. I mean, that is reasonably close. Generally speaking, the top side of the map, I find, often goes to the northwest corner, but honestly, it doesn't make a huge difference. Both corners are equally distant. However, we are seeing Gota aggressively push that center of the map, and that is working out nicely. The only thing, though, is that Anarchy now finally managing to get those reclaimed rocks going, and that's what... But that's allowing this little thug ball coming in. Thug law ball. Thug law ball at two minutes. So an amazingly fast thug law ball. Anarchy just doesn't, does not want to even play the raider game. Going straight to riot assault. And that's fine. That should work out really well, actually. All that considered, though, Golden and Anarchy are pretty well neck and neck as far as economy goes. It's just really a matter of how that production is used. And right now... Anarchid is managing to make a bit better use of it, especially as they are managing to get- Ooh, no knockback getting rid of that bandit. Gota, on the other hand, is providing a bit of a problem there, harassing that caretaker, which might be- Oh, that's gonna be a big problem. That's gonna be a massive problem, as the three bandits coming in here will be more than enough to take out that caretaker. And with that, the convict's at least trying to help out a little bit, but they don't have any firepower of their own, and nothing is going around back to try to deal with this. Instead, where's that thug law ball? Thug law ball's right up front here. That is not where it needs to be in order to save the base. That caretaker is going down- that's going to mean a huge blow to Anarchid's ability to build. Thankfully for them, between the Lotus and the Caretaker Death Explosion, they stopped the bandits, but at a cost. At a massive cost, and at this point, Anarchid also not building up at the same time, so they're not able to effectively use the metal, and both players, as a result, excessing. Go to excessing more so just because they have a lot of economy going on. But Anarchid excessing largely because they lost that Caretaker, which they finally have back. So at the very least, they will be able to make use of a lot of that metal, as they're now running out of the reclaim. I should point out there, a lot of that excess was reclaim being excessed. Which is a bit of a shame, all things considered. At any rate, with that, the Thug Law Ball Revenge comes in for Anarchid and should be able to get rid of a couple of these metal extractors. Possibly the one over here as well, if it goes for it. The rogues coming in from Gold seem like a really good counter, but not having a really easy time getting to the Thug Law Ball in the first place. While well, Thug Law Ball is now just completely running, ha uh, just running amok. It's wreaking havoc all along the south side of the map, and Gota can't really do much about that. Anarchid, on the other hand, managing to build up a pretty strong economy base, and certainly a pretty strong production base on top of the reclaim they keep getting. So overall, this is working out really well for them, at the same time, reducing Gota's ability to build up. So the entire south side of the map is now empty again. And that thug doing a great job protecting the outlaw. In theory, the rogue sh should be able to kill both, but the shield stopping the outlaw from dying, which is the thing the rogue really counters. And the thug, on the other hand, does not care. And now with that, with the rogues being close up to the outlaws, that's... that's it. That is going to be this entire rogue group done, and Anarchid having a pretty strong advantage going forward, but at the same time, 
Golda is set up for a bit of flank attack, and there's not much to counter it. Apart from that one Thug Law down there, there's no Thug Law ball built. Now, the Revenge Thug Law ball coming in here from Golda, this will be actually in Golda's favor. Like, Golda's gone for this, while at the same time having some bandits to harass when need be. And there's only one Thug Law ball coming out from Anarchid. Now that Anarchid's gone over to the Thug... Or sorry, now that Golda's gone over to the Thug Law ball themselves, Anarchid's likely to be building up some counters to that end. Yeah, they are! There's the rogues! It's exactly what I expected. The Anarchid's still managing to get a few bandits up here and there, because why not, really? That's great for raiding, allows you to get around the map, but at this point, that's still potentially a problem. Actually, that is still potentially a problem for Golda. While the outlaws are up here, the bandits manage to avoid them, then they should be fine with the convicts coming in. Why are the convicts here? The convicts coming in, I guess, and they're trying to build aggressive defenses, but honestly, I'm not quite sure what they're here for. Ah, it is aggressive defenses. And unfortunately, that is not going to be a thing that'll happen for very long, as the outlaws just, just not going to let that. Just nope. Just says nope and starts melting away at the constructors. While at the same time, Anarchist Commander under a decent amount of pressure, but it should be fine. Maybe. Actually, I'm not sure. The Rogue is causing a particular problem here, but Anarchist Commander should still be fine. It is pressured away from the northwest side, though. That does mean Gota has more room to expand, while at the same time, the southeast side is being punished for the expansion, so all things considered, it's a bit of an even trade. Gota, however, does have an economic advantage as a result of all this, even if they are not producing as much as they could, thanks to, you know, they are accessing. But, even with that, Gota is doing fine. This thug is done for. Trying its best, but really has no chance, and the metal extractors should be okay. And at the same time, Anarchid not managing to really build up all that much at the same... Uh, well, economically speaking, at least. Doing what they can, but losing a lot of constructors for very little gain, and not managing to take much of the metal compared to Golda. Sorry, much of the middle compared to Golda. And with this western... with this eastern side being destroyed, Golda should be able to completely dominate the entire... everything. Everything... everything outside of the northeast corner of the map belongs to Golda at this point. And nothing really is here to stop it. And there are some marketers coming in here from from Anarchid, and that is going to provide some support, actually. Quite a bit of support. But it may be too little too late. The Thug Law Ball, their own, however, is still reasonably strong. But again, this Stinger is going to be able to wipe out a lot of the shields. Possibly wipe out the Outlaw if the Outlaw is not careful. Actually, that's really... that's kind of concerning. The Outlaw is, however, protected by Convict Shields as well as Thug Shields. There you go. Massive shield ball coming in here, and the north side should belong to Anarchid sooner rather than later. But again, that's at the cost of everything around here being completely turned over to Golda. The Stinger will go down, so that's something. But then the revenge shot here from Golda, that actually won't be much. This, there's a massive army advantage for Anarchid right now, on top of the Racketeers as well. If they manage to hit that anything here, really, but especially if they hit the Outlaw, everything will be fine. If they stop the outlaw, then they can just walk in. And even if they don't stop the outlaw, there's still enough outlaws on their side that they can just wipe out the entire army of Golda and not worry about it. One outlaw gone, the other outlaw is still in place, but it almost doesn't matter. Of course, it almost doesn't matter as well because Golda is still managing to get around back Anarchid. And Anarchid, if they don't manage to win this fight up front, they are done. This is it. This is this is deciding the game, and Golda has managed to regroup on the top of the hill, forcing Anarchid back into what is going to be the last stand. If they even have the money to maintain themselves afterwards, really it's going to come down to whether they can destroy this and reclaim everything and turn them into production. And even with that, the cost on the metal extractors is likely to be too late. This is... This is falling apart for Anarchid. Golda has managed to push a very consistent army with 40-some-odd metal. I mean, the actual... It's 30 metal into the factory. But, compared to Anarchid's 20, that's a gradual grind, destroying Anarchid's forces, and without much to really stop it, other than a few racketeers here and there, this looks dire for Anarchid. They are managing over the lightning gun to get a bit of a pushback, thanks to their commander. The momentum is going in their favor, to some extent, but again, Golded has the economic advantage, so Anarchid needs to be able to pull that into reclaim. They have the constructors, and they have the commanders, so they can get that reclaim going. If they do so, they should have a chance. They have 40 build power onto their factory. They just need to get a bunch of reclaim. They can use that if this fight goes well. But as is, the fight is just becoming harder and harder with all the outlaws coming in from Gota because, again, Gota's economic advantage is just growing and means that their military advantage is just growing. So, really, all Anarchid can do is try to find some way of wiping this entire army out. 
on 19, bil 19 metal. If they had a bit more, I could see maybe dropping an air factory into a Thunderbird and just shocking the entire group. That's the only way I can think of they could possibly get back at this. Because at this point, Anarchid does not have much. Their commander lightning gun is good. Going on the other hand, going for a beam laser commander on theirs, and it's kind of irrelevant. The lightning gun is really the only thing that's going to be useful here. In fact, I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to a Faraday. I would think a Faraday for Anarchid would work decently well for the next time anything comes at them. But it looks like that's not the idea. The idea instead, pushing in, dealing with damage they can, but again, those outlaws just preventing basically any kind of approach from Anarchid. Especially the gold has them laid out in a line. I mean, theoretically, you can flank that, but with Anarchid's units all clumped up, it's not going to work out too well. And again, the Racketeer's doing a pretty decent job, but remember, Racketeer's have been nerfed recently. I'm pretty sure this was the nerf version of Racketeer's. So, with that, it's going to be a little bit difficult for them to actually get a whole lot of mileage. They are managing to get in a few of the stray outlaws. Stop them from doing much. But there are so many... How many outlaws is Gota have here? Gota having 13 out... Or 12 outlaws. Compared to Anarchid having, what, 5? Yeah, this is not comparable. At all. I, I get what Anarchid's trying to do, but this... Gota now has the exact strategy I was hoping Anarchid would be able to go for with the Thunderbird, and with that, Anarchid realizes there's no way they have this game. That Thunderbird closing it out, and Gota taking it pretty handily, too. I mean, early on, it was it was fairly even. Army value was fairly even. And Gota was slightly ahead, but still. Metal production was fairly even. The income was dead even. Anarchid was a slight advantage, but midway through the game, after Anarchid lost those expansions over to the southwest side of the map, or sorry, the northwest side of the map, and couldn't quite manage to get that harassment on the southeast to make it even, there wasn't really a whole lot they could do other than barely hold on and hope for the best in terms of counters, but honestly, other than Thunderbird, I'm not sure what they would have had to get themselves back in that game. So, with that, I'm going to be moving on to the next game, which is going to be a game that I can't see because I can't... Okay, well, it's going to be another game. I'll put the details on after I figure out what it is. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple seconds. <laughs> 